Hello everybody, my name is Patrick, I'm a drone engineer at Arc Electronics in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today I'm going to talk about how to do Aruco mark reduction in PX4 using ROS2. This is an important step towards a bigger project that we are working on, which is precision landing custom modes in PX4 using ROS2. We already made a tutorial on how to do your uh, custom modes in PX4, so please make sure to check it out and if you're interested in the precision landing, then follow up in a couple of weeks and then we're gonna make a tutorial about that as well. So let's get started. So just to give you a quick introduction about the content of this video. There are many cool computer vision applications used in the drone, drone industry. Uh, you can do target localization, mapping, navigation, object tracking. Uh, one of the easiest ones that I can come up with or demonstrate to you is actually Arco Mark Detection and it's a pretty useful one since it's like very easy to be implemented. There are open source libraries out that you can use uh, provided by OpenCV for example and they're actually pretty meaningful if you know how to use these uh, Arco Mark Detections because they, they don't only detect the markers, you can also estimate the poles of the camera relative to the marker if you have the camera parameters so it means that you can get how far away uh, you are from the uh, marker if you know the marker size uh, yeah so the thing is that uh, the idea is to fly above this arco marker then uh, after detecting it get the relative position of the camera and then you can do whatever you want with that information and uh, just to give you a quick heads up in the follow-up video I'm going to do precision landing so I will estimate uh, like where I should uh, land pretty much so this is gonna be my landing target yeah so let's see how it goes in ROS yeah let's just jump into our git repository I feel like the uh, picture says it all tractor beam you can read into the same things I was saying previously, Arco Marker Detection Tutorial, Arco Marker uh, Reference below if you are interested in reading more into it. Uh, there are some prerequisites that you need to have, uh, basic things, Ubuntu, ROS2 Humble, PX Autopilot with uh, Arco Marker in it, and then Dunbar Facing Camera, uh, Micro DDS Cuban Control, OpenCV uh, built from source, uh, the newest version of ROS, Gazebo bridge uh, also very important to have the stream then yeah so let's just look into how the um, px4 looks like with the arco tag and the worst facing camera so you just have to add an uh, arco marker uh, include it and then you can put it into your custom where i'm going to show it in a second but uh, the camera uh, also you just uh, have a base link uh, you provide the configuration pretty straightforward and then, yeah, so you can just go to the word and then have a look how the Arco marker is included. Yeah, nothing complicated in that. You can also create your own word for it. You can just go ahead, clone the workspace, check out the right branch, and then install OpenCV from source. Uh, that way we just make sure that we are gonna use the same OpenCV version, and then it's actually gonna work because sometimes they change versions and implementations. Uh, after that, you can just initialize the submodules, and then uh, go ahead and build a package that's gonna take some time but, but once you're done with that uh, you can just go ahead and use it right away let's open a couple of terminals one for the micro dds agent other one uh, for spawning the drone with the downward facing camera in it and also the word uh, there is a arco marker spawned uh, once that's done we need to start the ROS2 gazebo bridges this needed to be able to access the camera stream from Gazebo using ROS. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, once that's done, then we can just go ahead and then uh, open QGC. Uh, yeah, so once QGC is connected, you can just go ahead and then uh, take off and the drone is gonna fly away. And once that's done, we can just uh, move to the next task. So we can just go ahead and then uh, source the workspace. Once that's done, we can just run the Aruco Tracker node. After it's running, we can have a look on the topics. And there are two things that are kind of like interesting here. One of them is a target pose. This is the Aruco marker's pose in the drone's camera frame. 
um, we can just uh, topic echo to it and then we can also have a look on the uh, camera stream that I modified a little bit but once uh, we just look at the numbers it doesn't make too much sense so let's have a look on the actual stream uh, using the RQT image view when we go ahead uh, you can see that the uh, coordinate frame is like being recognized uh, and also that the um, target like position like coordinates you can see that on the lower right corner I think it's like a pretty nice application so yeah I think that's pretty much it yeah so we just go ahead and open the HPP file you can see all the libraries being included then you can see the class implementation public and private variables ROS2 callbacks SS as publishers also data and state variables so once that's done we can just have a look on the CPP uh, and yeah so in the CPP you can see the constructor being initialized uh, we have a node called Aruco tracker and then we have all the um, OpenCV stuff so we have to pick which library we are using for Aruco then there are also you can see the subscribers and publishers and also the, the ROS2 parameters then there is an image callback so once we receive a uh, uh, image we try to do the Aruco marker detection and get the corners then we only store that uh, using the camera parameters and when uh, we have actually the camera metrics and everything then we can just go ahead and then do the distortion as I mentioned and then you can see okay do we have the required ID if we do we just go ahead and then uh, extract the pose of the marker in the camera frame once that's done, we can go ahead and start building our uh, geometry message. Uh, it's gonna be like a pretty basic like post stand uh, message. And then uh, once that's done uh, and everything worked out, the, all the if statements uh, went in the way that they were supposed to, we can just go ahead and then uh, publish the message. Uh, then there is the camera info callback. The camera info callback pretty much brains out the uh, camera metrics so it makes sure that, that we have all the required information to uh, do the pose estimation and then last but not least the annotating the image so that's when I put the coordinates on the stream and then there are two uh, things running down below after that we can have a look on the CMake list and the package.xml pretty straightforward nothing complicated in that there's also a launch file that you can utilize and uh, besides that there is a config file there, there is the uh, ROS2 parameter I was talking about the ID that you want to use and then yeah that's pretty much it so I think we can just have a conclusion so this was the Arco marker detection tutorial I hope that you understood the concept of it and you're able to utilize it for your own application uh, I'm planning to do a hardware demonstration to show you how to turn these uh, ROS nodes into services so you can just go and use uh, the stream right away and also as I said we are going to have a precision landing tutorial coming up in the upcoming weeks so make sure to check that out as well. If you're interested in US manufactured drone hardware please make sure to check out our webpage and if you're interested in uh, being uh, up to date about the drone community news please make sure that you follow us on social media thank you so much and have a good one bye